Okay, this is uh, number 27 from section 5.5, the cosine of 4x. And again, we want to see what the period is so we can get an idea of what's happening. So remember the period equals uh, 2 pi over b, which is going to be 2 pi, in this case, over 4, which is going to end up being pi over 2. So, if the cosine of x has two solutions on this interval, and remember our interval is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. If the cosine of x has got two solutions, and then 2x would have four solutions, then 4x would have eight solutions. All right? Okay, so... We're kind of multiplying our period by 4. So we have 8 solutions, uh, two, 4 for each of the quadrants that the basic solution appears in. So a bit of work to do. So let's get to work here. So think of this as 4x. So we'll say 4x equals, and the cosine of what angle is uh, square root of 3 over 2? Well, the square root of 3 over 2 would be pi over 6, okay? Except this is negative, all right? So that's going to put the cosine in quadrant 2 or 3. So that's going to be, in quadrant 2, it would be 5 pi over 6. And then we also have In the other quadrant, 4x would equal 7 pi over 6 in quadrant 3. So those are my two basic solutions, all right? So I have to find out what x is because this is what 4x is, all right? Cosine of something is negative. The square root of 3 over 2, that something can either be 5 pi over 6 because the cosine of that is that or 7 pi over 6. But then we need to multiply by... One fourth, and we get x equals. And then this is going to be six times four is twenty-four, so five pi over twenty-four. Okay. And then if we do the same thing over here, we're going to end up with x equals. Um, 7 pi over 24. Okay, so those are my basic solutions, my first two. But remember, this is periodic, so we just have to multiply a period. Each period is going to repeat itself. Now, the period is pi over 2, but don't multiply, sorry. We have to add pi over 2 to this to get the next possible answer. In other words, again, if you look at this, this, this was just a sign, but so you get the idea, if I wanted... This would be my first solution, but because of the change in period, this would be my next solution. I would just have to add to this one period. Now, this period was pi. In this case, it's going to be pi over 2. So I just add a pi over 2 to this and keep doing that until I get out of my domain. I just have to keep doing that. Now, remember, intuitively, we thought we would have eight solutions, so we should have four here and four here. That's what it should work out to. So I've got this. And then let's add, so this is my first one, pi over 24. So I'm going to keep everything in 24s, maybe reduce them at the end. So pi over 2 is the same thing as 12 pi over 24. Is that the same thing as pi over 2? Yes. So I just keep adding 12s here until I, till I get more than 2 pi. Now, now 2 pi would be 24, it would be 48 pi over 24, right? So I have to have 28 on the top. Okay, so first of all, if I add 12 to this, what's 5 plus 12? 17 pi over 24. And I'll add another 12. What's tw 17 plus 12? 12. And I still don't get to 48, so I'll add another 12. And what do I get? Uh, 3141 pi over 24. I still don't have 48, so if I had another 12, if I had 12, that's 53. 
So that's going to be too big. So those are my four solutions. I just keep adding a, a period, which is a pi over 2. Okay? Now, I know it's a little bit more intuitive than formulamatic, okay? If you read the book, they've got a nice little formula method that you do, but it, it takes a lot more time to do all this, but this is really what's happening. You're just adding a period. That, that's basically what they're doing. Okay? Because they, it, it, they do make it a little more complicated. So the same thing over here. So that's, that's what's built off of this 5 pi over 4, and then another pi over 2, another pi over 2, another pi over 2. Now the same thing over here. I've got this one, and I'm going to be adding, again, the same thing, 12 pi. So this is going to be, uh, what's 7 plus 12? That's 19 pi over 24. And if I add another 12 to that, that's going to be uh, 2131 pi over 24. And if I add another one, that's going to be 3343 pi over 24. And then if I add one more, I'm going to be 55, so I'm going to be past the 48. Remember, 48 pi over 24 equals 2 pi. And that's where I don't want to pass because that's that's my upper limit on my domain. So there's your eight solutions. So it wasn't as bad, you know, because we kind of took a shortcut and just kept adding these pi over twos. Found the common denominator and did it like this. Now on your solution set, they would probably write them out in order. So if we would we would want to do that, do such a thing. So when you look in the back and check your answers, they're, they're, they're usually given like this. So what's my small? So they're all over 24, so that'd be easy to figure out. So I got 5 pi over 24, and then 7 pi over 24. And they do alternate. That's kind of by, based on the nature of things. So 17 pi over 24, and then 19 pi over 24, and then 29 pi over 24 and 31 pi over 24 and 41 pi over 24 and the last one is 43 pi over 24. That's your solution set. And that's a bunch. 5, 7, 17, 19, uh, 29, 31, 41, 43 pi, all over 24. Okay, so those are your eight solutions. It's another humdinger of a problem there. Okay. And I actually did kind of cut down the work, so... From the, you know, the way they do it in the in the solution book, it's a lot more work. Okay, so if that makes sense...